Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Trevor Polk. Thank you for joining me for another episode of In The Word. Uh, today we're going to be talking once again about our kids. This is going to be our third uh, part. Um, I have two previous videos where you know I talked about um, some situations that we may have with our children in ways that we you know can handle those according to the scriptures. You know, um, and today I wanted to talk about in this third part, I wanted to talk about the rod of correction the rod of correction what does the Bible say about the rod of correction and if you don't know what the rod of correction is um, it's basically talking about physical discipline when it comes to our children and we know that um, if you live in America like I do you know we pretty much almost live in uh, a place now where you know they want to throw you in jail for any type of physical uh, discipline when it comes to your children so I just wanted to share a few scriptures you know maybe we can be enlightened by these scriptures maybe these scriptures can speak to us you know give us a better understanding of what you know God you know was talking about when he talked about the rod of correction amen so um, I'm going to be coming out of the book of Proverbs uh, I'm going to be going through these scriptures so if you want to write them down or try to follow along, I'm going to try to just basically go straight through. Uh, but yeah, let's let's jump into it. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 15 says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So it says that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Now, the definition of rod is a stick or switch or a bundle of sticks or switches for beating as punishment, punishment, chastisement. Uh, so it says a stick or a switch. And it's funny because, um, you know, my mom is from down south. She's from from Alabama. And, you know, um, you know, if you know anybody that comes from down south, you know, in, in the parts of the south, you know, they talk about being disciplined with a switch. You know, uh, those situations where, listen, go get me a little switch off the tree or get me a switch off the tree. Um, you know, because uh, it's time for you to to, to, to be disciplined or, or get a spanking. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you when you talk to the old timers or, or those that are been been living longer than you that lived in those areas, you know, they will make the joke of, you know, you got to make sure you bring back the right switch. You can't bring back one too small or they're going to tell you to go find another one. But we know in our day and age, pretty much, you know, especially you know, up north and in other parts of America, and I'm not sure about other parts of the country, you know, how discipline is handled, you know, um, but, you know, we, we're mainly dealing with belts, right? You know, like belts or, or the hand or whatever have you. Um, but a lot of times when we see for beating as punishment, when we see that word beating, a lot of times when you hear the word beat, you know, it, it sounds very aggressive, you know, because when we're talking about the rod of correction, the Bible isn't talking about abuse. I think there's a difference between uh, uh, abuse and what the Bible is talking about. But let's get into the definition of beat because there's many definitions, but I'm going to read this one. Um, it says to punish by hitting and striking repeatedly. Basically, that's what it is. To whip, to flog, to spank. So that's what the Bible is talking about here when it's talking about beating. It's talking about a spanking or to spank. The definition of spank is to strike with something flat as the open hand especially on the buttocks as in punishment a series of smacks especially on the buttocks as in punishing a child amen so that's the definition of spank that's what it is talking about here when it talks about a beating about the rod of correction It's talking about the spanking of a child It is not talking about abuse and it goes on to say chastisement the definition of chastise is to punish especially by beating to scold sharply to chasten amen Proverbs 23 13 and 14 says withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with the rod, um, or in other words, spank him with the rod, he shall not die. So the Bible is saying, listen, if a, a, a good spanking, if you give him a spanking, he's not go he or she is not going to die. It says, thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. So just in this second text of scripture, we see how serious it is when um, the Bible is talking about the importance of disciplining a child. Amen. Um, Proverbs 13 and 24 says, he that spareth 
the, his rod, excuse me, he that spareth his rod hateth his son or daughter. But he that loveth him chasteneth him be time. So it says that if you if you uh, spare the rod, then that means you hate your child. It says, but if you love him, you chasten him be times. The word chasten here means to punish in order to correct or make better. So there's a purpose behind this. This isn't because you're mad. This isn't because you're tired of the child doing the same old thing. There's a purpose here. It says to punish in order to correct or make better chastise, to refrain from excess, to subdue, to make purer in style, uh, to refine, to purify. Uh, the word be times means early or early enough, promptly or quickly. So what it's saying is that, listen, we don't allow this thing to linger. We, we nip it in the bud early. You know, that's why it says that if you love him, you will chasten him B times. You will chasten him early. You won't or her early. You won't allow it to linger. It'll be promptly and quickly. Why? Because you love them. You don't want to see them going down the road that they are going down. And, you know, when you think about spankings, like, you know, we can find in many cultures and different races, even to this day where, you know, parents are still spanking their children in every race and every culture and most of the time if you talk to anybody that gives their children spankings most of the time it's not you, you know you don't give your child this spanking for just anything a lot of times it's for something that's really very extreme or or you see something that they're doing a road that they're getting ready to go down that you want to let them know listen this is serious business. This is very important that you do not go down this road. You know, you deal with it early. You know, in other words, what, what the definition said early enough to, you know, to where it does not linger and that it does not grow and become a bigger problem. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 15 says the rod and reproof gives wisdom. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So it says, listen, the rod and reproof gives wisdom, but a child that is left to himself, in other words, a child that is pretty much allowed to run wild, he's going to eventually bring shame to his mother or his father or his family. Why? Because there was no uh, chastisement B times. There was no chastisement early enough. Sometimes people like to try to, you know, uh, chastise or deal with their children as they get older. But the best time to deal with them and chastise them is early on to nip it in the bud early, whatever it is that we see that we don't like and that we know is going to, uh, against scripture, that is going against um, just good morals and good behavior. But there's something very key here that I want to touch on in this last one that I just read. And this is going to be the last verse on that. It says the rod and reproof give wisdom. That word reproof means, and this is the key, it says the act of reproving or something said in reproving. Rebuke. Reprove means to speak to in disapproval. Rebuke. To express disapproval or something done or said. To convince or convict. So what the Bible is saying here is that, listen, this is not about just physical discipline. The physical discipline is to get their attention, but there should be some reproof going on. We should be talking to them. It should not be a spanking to where we're angry. And, you know, sometimes you, you see abuse. Sometimes you see people that will, will hit on their kids and they're swearing at them and cussing at them, but there's no reproof there. There's no explanation of why you are giving them a spanking. There's no explanation of why they should not be doing what they are doing. And, and especially when it comes to us, you know, you know, we that are Christians and that are saved and we believe in following the scriptures and following Christ. We have to, when we discipline our children, reprove them and give them scripture, help them to understand according to what it says in God's word, why this is not a good decision. And guess what? We talked about it and train up a child in the way they should go because later on they will not depart from it. Amen. And that's why I wanted to touch on this because a lot of times when you hear people talk about spankings and physical discipline, a lot of times they're talking about abuse. They're talking about, you know, some of the things that we see, you know, parents do where they're breaking arms and they're doing all this crazy stuff and, and they're, they're calling the kids all out of their names and just getting super crazy with them when that's not what the Bible is talking about. It's talking about a physical discipline on the behind and some reproof 
to go with it. Amen. You know, some some wisdom and some understanding, some rebuke to go with it so that they can understand why you are disciplining them. And a lot of times it's to get their attention. It's just like a child, you know, you know, you're cooking and, and the eye of the stove is red and they see the eye of the stove and, and it looks fascinating. They get ready to touch it and you pop their hand real quick. You know what I mean? That's going to get their attention. And so you say, oh, baby, don't touch. You know, you're letting them know, like, listen, this is something serious. This is a road that you do not want to go down. But I wanted to read one last scripture before I close. And I thought it was really powerful because this talks about the discipline of God, the chastisement of God on, you know, when it comes to God chastising us. And let's be honest, if you're somebody saved, you know, I'm mainly talking to people that are saved and have an understanding of what it is for God to chastise you. Listen, if you've ever been chastised by God, you would much rather take a physical spanking on the butt. If you have ever been chastised by God or dealt with um, by God on something that you should not have been doing, man, I, I would have took the the the, the, the spanking on the butt uh, anytime, you know, above that. Because, you know, when God deals with you, he deals with you in a serious way. Amen. Especially for those of us that are adults. But this last uh, text of scripture that I wanted to read, it's Hebrews chapter 12, verses 8 through 11. And we're going to close here. It says, but if ye be without chastisement, I don't want you guys to miss this, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers. So it's saying, listen, if you belong to Christ, if you belong to God, then you have to be a partaker of chastisement. Why is it saying that? Because you are going to mess up. Amen. And because God loves you, he has to chastise you. And that's why he said to us, if you love your child, you will chastise them. But let's read on. It says, but if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So he said, listen, if you're not going to partake in the chastisement of God, then you must be not, not must be. You are a bastard and not a son. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. We have had fathers of our flesh, our natural fathers, who have given us the rod of correction and reproof, and we have given them reverence. And that's another reason why we discipline our kids, because we want them to understand reverence and to give reverence. Amen. It says, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? It says, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. In other words, he's saying, listen, they did the best uh, that they could in disciplining us to the best of their ability to what they thought was good enough. It says, but he for our prophet, talking about God, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So that chastisement that we get from God, you know, it goes so much deeper. And that's why it feels the way it feels, because it's for our prophet, you know, uh, that we might be be partakers of his holiness. Amen. But this is the part I really wanted to get to. And, and we're going to close right here. It says now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. So when we have to discipline our kids for them and for us at the time, it is not joyous at all. It goes on to say, but grievous. It says, nevertheless, in other words, however, but in spite of it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. That word exercise means train. Remember, we talked about train up a child in the way they should go. So it says, listen, nevertheless, however, afterwards it yieldeth the peaceable fruit. So what it is saying is like, listen, if they are partakers of this chastisement, that it may not feel good now, but later on it's going to produce a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are trained or exercised thereby. So I just wanted to touch on that a little bit because that's always like a you know, a real, you know, touchy topic when it comes to people talking about physical discipline. Should we spank our kids or shouldn't we? Yes, we live, 
in a time where, you know, um, the law wants to say you can't even spank your child. You can't even pop them on the hand and things of that nature. But we go according to what the scripture says and we allow God to work out the rest. Because if we do it the way God says do it, then it's going to be beneficial to them later on. Because he let us know that if you do not discipline them, that later on they're going to bring you shame if there's no discipline there. If you leave them to themselves and let them do what they want, they're going to bring shame unto you. And what a lot of people don't understand is, yes, there's abuse and people should be locked up for that. But when it comes to just that discipline, that spanking, that reproof that society is trying to say that we shouldn't do, that comes from the devil because the devil knows that we will have much more, um, uh, many more children running around wild. So guys, listen, know that I love you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And when you subscribe, click on the bell. Please don't forget to share. I truly appreciate all the comments that I've been getting, um, you know, all of the encouragement, all the prayers. I'm praying for you guys as well. And just remember that, you know, this is a journey and we all have to walk this journey together, but we have to walk it through the scriptures. So guys, listen, know that I love you. And to the next time, don't forget to stay in the word. Love you guys. Shalom.